Hi everybody, welcome to Witness My Minis. I'm Peter and today it's time for a tour. So it's been three years going on four since I started painting miniatures. Today I thought we would take a look at some of the equipment that I have gathered up in that time span as well as a small tour of my very small hobby space. Maybe there is something in my setup that you can use in yours. In the beginning, I actually sat at the uh, dinner table in the living room. Uh, I had these black boxes with the paints and brushes and stuff, and I had to take it all in and each and every day get it all back in those boxes and put it away. Because you see, at the time, my kid was about two years old and leaving things out in the open, let's just say it wasn't an option. Luckily, the hype of painting in the beginning is so freaking big that setting up the station each and every time and putting it away each and every day wasn't a big hurdle, really. I did what I had to do to put paint on brush and brush too many. But slowly, the number of black boxes with stuff in them started to increase. I had to realize the words of the wise guru himself. With great power comes great squid maw. Give yourself hobby space that you always have available for yourself. Get yourself a paint station. That said, not everybody is Scott or Emil and we don't have these huge spaces. And most of us are just normal plebs that have to find space in our own homes. So in my house, we have a room fittingly called the uh, extra room. So we had recently uh, decided to put in the uh, closets here so that we had kind of a walk-in closet thing. It's also a place where we store things that we don't have any um, particular space for. So yeah, you get the point. There's often things to the brink in here. <laughs> So we actually install a closet from Ikea that, that could house all my stuff as well. So this is what you see behind me here. This is an Ikea closet. But of course, it didn't take me long to accumulate more stuff and getting more and more deep into the hobby and getting more stuff meant more storage needed. So as well as the IKEA cabinet, we have two IKEA shelves and I have a painting desk here from IKEA and underneath this I have drawers as well. So let's start with everything within reach. Things that I will be reaching for most often whilst in the midst of painting. First of all, as you see here, we have the Citadel paint rack. These was of course the first colors that I've used when getting into the hobby. I like so many others. Today I tend to not use them as much. I have a couple of contrast colors that I tend to go back to. And to the right of these, we have the first ever paint set that I bought from my first ever commission gig. The Scale 75 game and color range. At that time, Scale 75 was all the rage and it was the only thing that every YouTuber talked about. Not knowing too much about the hobby or the paints, I mistook this set for the scale color set that everybody was toting. And in hindsight, I'm very grateful for that because these paints are very satin and the scale color sets are incredibly mad. So I think I would have struggled a lot if I would have gotten that set instead. So this was a very basic set, satin paints, and I could just get a wide variety of tones to be able to play around with colors, really. It was a great starter set, to be honest. So these are organized by color, and besides the fantasy color set, I also have the NMM set and the red set from scale color that I bought afterwards. And as I said, they're very mad. But the NMM set is really good and it has great colors for practicing for steel NMM. And besides that, there is also the fairy skin set from Vallejo as well as some other highlight colors from Vallejo. So moving further in this direction, we have a shelf over here that houses all the paints that I use through the airbrush. We have inks from Green Stuff World, all around me, Liquitex, a golden high flow paints, Molotov colors. They are great for going straight in the airbrush and also great for priming if you want those colored primers. And then there is the Scale 75 FX fluorescent paint set. My go-to fluorescent paints. So going back into the cabinet once again, and beside the Citadel paints, I have cups for brushes. One cup is for new brushes and my Kolinsky sables. One is for used brushes or oil brushes. And one is for messed up brushes. Let 
you can use for basing and such. I also have this small thing where I keep magnets, needles, steel balls for mixing paints, small lights for the uh, for planning out oversell. I also have these small bottles here. These three came in very large containers, so I just got these smaller ones so that I could pour it over and have it more ready at hand. So there is linseed oil, white spirit, and a pre-mixed flow weight. And all the tools that I use all the time is in this small box. So here we have drills, we have clippers, we have the exacto blade, we have a small scissor, that's actually shit, but we have pliers. I can just take this, put it on the painting table, or I can just put it back in here in the cabinet when I don't need it anymore. And in front of that, we have the Vortex Mixer. Since I got the Vortex Mixer, I don't think that I could live without it. If we then pull this drawer out, we have all my Chimera paints. There is something so great in seeing them all lined up like this. I got the original set in the middle, I got the expansion set to the right, and all the signature sets to the sides. There is so many gray colors on this shelf. On the next shelf, underneath that one, we'll find the Scale 75 Artist range. Again, having them all laid out like this gives you a great vantage point to see what colors you have. And they come in these great colored sets, so they're really easy to organize. Since I got these ones, K75 Artist range and the Chimera colors have become my main paint of choice. Hence, they are really close by and neatly organized. If you're interested in knowing about all the paints that I prefer, there is a video for that. So if you want to check that out, it should be in the corner right now. Underneath this, we have the first of many black boxes. First, we have four black boxes that housing armies for Warhammer Fantasy Battles. These are my buddy's armies that I'm just holding for him because we usually play here. They could be better organized, but yeah, um, this box houses a lot of Empire dudes. It's good that they're varnished, right? Because, um, yeah, these dudes have seen better days. And then I have this big box with terrain pieces for setting up the gaming table. Next to that, we have the compressor. Like so many others, I have the A186 with a tank. And on top of that, I have two airbrushes, the Harder in Steambeck Infinity CR Plus and the Sparmax 3 with the 0.3 needle. The Lager was my first ever airbrush and has been my workhorse ever since the start. It's very versatile. I've primed with it, I sanded it with it, I filter with it, and I even do some fine details. I've broken the needle and the nozzle once. Other than that, it has worked wonders, and it still does. It's time to get in some black boxes. First, we have this box with pigments. And as you see here, I have all my pigments in here. I have the binder in here, as well as a palette. This makes it very easy for me to use this box when I place pigments, so the pigments don't go everywhere in the room. I can just take the mini in question. I can hold it over the box, and I can place my pigments right in here so I don't have to clean up the uh, paint station after each time. Then there is tufts. I got two boxes with tufts and grass and stuff and there is a lot of different ones. The thing I found with working with tufts, it's great to have a variety of different ones because you never see like foliage being just like one bush. It's always finding that variation in nature that makes it feel more real. So having a lot of different choices makes it very easy when coming to that stage of the process. Just taking this box out, seeing what I have, seeing what fits the um, the base or the scene, the diorama that I'm building, and yeah, just going to town really. Then I have one box filled with airbrush stuff. So these are all the accessories that came with the airbrushes, like the cleaning tools, the uh, tools for removing the nozzle, as well as some cleaning supplies and masking tape and masking putty. While I'm airbrushing, I have this set to the side so that I can reach inside if I need anything while I'm working. And there is this box started. So this is a box of shame, really. This is stuff that I've started a long time ago, and I've just primed it, sanded it, and it's been laying in this box forever. Yeah, it's a box of shame. 
Then we have boxes for basing. And in these, we find cork for the uh, start of building a base or a scene to build the elevation. And then we have different kinds of gravel. We have sand. We have, of course, coconut fiber. Again, like with the pigment, I usually keep a spoon in here so that I can place the sand or the gravel right inside the box, having the sand go in here instead of going everywhere around the painting station. And then there is bits and miscellaneous items. So in these boxes, we will find a lot of different kind of bits. Bits from past commissions, from spruce that I don't need anymore, or some that I've gotten in like sales on eBay, together with stuff that I've bought. And then there is, of course, a lot of different things that I've just picked up. When you put the hobby goggles on, everything can be used in some way or another. There's a lot of weird stuff in here that I thought at one point that oh, this could be cool. This could be used for something. And I've placed it in this box and now looking at it, I don't know what I was thinking, but maybe, I mean, you never know what project you'll be ending up starting. And maybe there is something in here that could be useful then. I also use textured rollers from Green Stuff World together with oven baked clay. And as you see here, we have some slates with that. That can easily be broken off and just put on the base. Then we have a box for trays and bases. Trays, of course, meaning movement trays and bases for all the kinds of different games. Going back to this side over here, the top shelf houses my books. I have a small collection of army books as well as the main core book for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And besides that, there is some books for painting. Of course, the famous color and light from James Gurney and the amazing book Figopedia. And on the next shelf, we have a sonic cleaner for those deep cleanses of the airbrush. If you take care of your airbrush, you won't need this too much, but it's great to have the option. And on the next shelf, we have those bigger cans that I mentioned before of oils, spirits and Floyd, as well as some paint remover and airbrush cleaning stuff. And besides these, I have all my metal paints on this shelf. And then there is this shelf over here. This is filled with tools that I don't use that often, like for sculpting. This is also where I keep my primers and my mediums and my varnishes. Also, this big compartment here have a great space for the palette sheets for my palette. And mentioning palettes, after upgrading from the DIY palette, I bought the Redgrass game first edition small one. It was great not having to cut the uh, baking paper yourself, but having the actual sheets that you can just take out and go for it. When upgrading to this hobby space, I actually got the big one. Version 2 Studio XL from Redgrass. And of course, there are stickers. We got Zambies. We got Might Be Monsters. Oh, we have Bluey. Wonder who put that there. And of course, Massive Voodoo. Go Roman. <laughs> On the last shelf here, we have spray cans, we have some glues, we have some activators, and we have some uh, epoxy resin that I've yet to try out. So it's time to go through how I set up my desk. So to the right here, I'll have my web palette. I have a cut in mat. Uh, the lamp that I use while painting is a lamp that I got from Amazon. It's not the uh, red grass game lamp, but it's the one that everybody used before that. And it's sufficient, I would say. And then I have a camera holder from Elgato. This is an, an arm so that I can just hang my camera upside down here. And to that, I run all the uh, cables that I need. The dummy battery with a power cord so that I don't have to worry about battery life. And the HDMI to a small screen that I have right in front of me so that I can see while painting. This was a game changer for sure to be able to see how the sharpness looks and trying to keep stuff in frame. It really helps with that. But I know I have a lot to work on with that because, you know, I'll paint, I'll be painting like this. I'll be painting like that. I'll, I move around a lot while painting. So this is something that I've gotten very aware of while having the screen and having to try to paint on camera. And because the camera is upside down, I also have to flip the screen if you're wondering why it's upside down. And of course, the first thing I do while editing the painting footage is to turn everything around 180 degrees as well. In front of me right here, I'll have a iPad on the 
small stand so that I can watch stuff while painting or if I want any reference pictures to look at while I'm painting. Now let's go underneath the desk into all those drawers. So the first drawer is a dump site. There are some paperwork, some stickers and stuff that I'm working on at the moment or things that I just want off my table if this area is filled up over here. I will organize that later. The second drawer is for cleaning and sponging. So there is uh, Q-tips, there are sponges, there is various slices of foams as well as baby wipes for cleaning the desk. In the third drawer I got some plinths. I got some containers for mixing stuff in. I got some adhesive tapes. A lot of them, actually. You never know when you're gonna need a good tape. And the fourth drawer is for oil paints and the palette sheets that I use with them. Again, if you're interested in my go-to paints and wanna get some tips, oil paints are also in the video that I mentioned before. The fifth drawer is for uh, basing and auxiliary products. I have some uh, texture paints, some putties, some glues, some pre-mixed basing material, acrylic resin, water effects, famous dirty down, crackle paint, oven baked clay. Yeah, a lot of stuff. And the sixth and last drawer is for all my electronics, my computer and all the cords and gear and accessories and stuff that I need to make all of this happen. Last but not least, I installed a display cabinet for showing off some minis. One big drawback of painting for commissions is of course the lack of getting things to display. Most of the things that I paint, I send off to somebody else so that they can put them in their display cabinets. But I'm slowly getting there anyways. But the main thing here is of course the shelf with all these amazing gifts. Things sent to me by the community and some of them for Butterfly for Hannah. Getting these amazing pieces made me take the plunge and know that I needed to get a display cabinet because these things just need to be displayed. And last but not least I have this big old cabinet with all my Warhammer Fantasy Battles armies still on square bases ready to take to the battle and see what the dice gods have to say. I hope you liked the small insight on how I set up my hobby corner. This was lesson how to squeeze a lot of stuff into a very small and confined space. Hopefully you'll get some tips for your hobby space as well. If you have any questions, ask them down below or come and hang out on our Discord. The link is in the description. And as usual, I have to thank my patrons for sticking with me on my slow crawl into the miniature painting hobby abyss. Thank you guys. It means more than you think. So that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Bye.